Okay, let's look at the other example that we have. Okay, we're going to keep our steps here. Here's the self-intercept form, but remember, it has to be solved for y in order for us to get the slope and the y-intercept. This equation is not solved for y. So what are the steps that we take to get y by itself? Well, the first thing we have to do is to move the x term to the other side by using the addition property. So I'm going to subtract 2x from the left and subtract 2x from the right. Now when I do this, I'm left with 5y is equal to negative 2x plus 15. And you may, may be asking, do I have to have it in this order? Can I put the constant first? You can, but keep in mind we're trying to get things to look like this form, where the x term comes first and then you have the constant. So it's always a good idea to start getting in the habit of putting your variables first and your constants at the end. Now, to finish solving this for y, divide both sides by 5. And on the right side, we can just divide each term by 5. It's going to be the same thing. So the result of this is that y is equal to negative 2 fifths x plus 3. Did I have to write it like this? No, but by writing it this way, it makes it very easy for me to see the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is now negative 2 fifths after I've solved for y. So my slope is negative 2 fifths. Keep in mind we are talking about rise over run. And my y-intercept is the order pair what? 0 and 3. The constant here tells you the y-coordinate for the y-intercept. Now you may have difficulties looking at this slope because it's negative. But remember, lines that go up from left to right have a positive slope. So in this example, I have a slope that is negative. So what should my line be doing from left to right? It should be going down. So always check that whenever you have these graphs. Now, you only have one negative, so you can look at it this way. You can look at it as negative 2 over 5, or you can look at that as 2 over negative 5, one or the other. You don't have two negatives. So now, how do we graph this? Going back to the steps, the first step is to plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, positive 3. So 0, positive 3. And then I use my slope to find additional points. Let's use this guy right here, negative 2 over 5. That means from this point, I'm going to have a rise of negative 2 and a run of positive 5. That's going to put me at this point right here. Now you see if I try to get another point by going the same direction, down 2 and over 5, well, I'm off the graph, I'm off the grid. So that's not going to help me out. Let's look at it this way. A rise of 2 and a run of negative 5. So if I go up to and run negative 5, that means going to the left in the x direction. And then we have that point. So, I'm just going to draw these guys, draw this line, and make sure that everything matches up. Okay. So there we go. And you can check this. The coordinates for this point would be 5, positive 1. And when you check that here, it should all work out. So let's do that real quick. If I plug the 5 in here, so that means 2 times 5 plus 5 times my y, which is 1, I want to see does that equal 15. And it's pretty simple to see. That we're going to have 10 plus 5, and that, of course, does equal 15. So it checks out. So to find the slope and the y-intercept, Solve for y. 
Then once you have the y-intercept, you plot that, use the slope to find additional points, and then you draw the line. And again, it's always a good idea to check the points that you have back into the original equation to make sure that that does work out correctly.